Hello and welcome. I'm Emma, for those of you that don't know me, and today we'll be taking you through a nice, gentle Pilates class, um, allowing ourselves to really focus in on our deep abdominal muscles, deep back muscles and the pelvic floor, and finding a nice sense of flexibility around the surrounding joints, um, the shoulders, the hips, and specifically the spine. So um, let's look at what we can get into our bodies now. We'll take a few minutes to just allow ourselves to really zone in on how we're feeling. So finding a nice sturdy base. In Pilates, we work in parallel um, with the feet just underneath the hips rather than just underneath the shoulders. So we've got that slightly narrower stance. So finding those knobbly bits of your hips just at the front there and tracking the line down. That's where we want our toes to be. So let's allow ourselves to, if, you comfort, if you're comfortable enough to close the eyes, please do. If you don't want to, that's absolutely fine. And we'll just allow ourselves to breathe nice and gently there. As we breathe gently there, we'll allow ourselves to find a nice internal focus. And let's start by thinking about the feet as we allow that breath to come and go just nice and gently. So we'll allow our weight to come over the front of our feet, taking our weight into the side of the foot, taking our weight into the back of the foot, and then around. So we're making a nice big circle there. Let's do that again. And then we'll find that place at the outside of the circle and go back the opposite direction. We're circling back the other way. It might feel a little bit odd going the other way. And, and as always, if you want to open your eyes, please do. You can open your eyes at any time. Especially if you feel any dizziness or any wooziness, just allow those eyes to open. Now we're going to allow ourselves to gently spiral inwards. So hopefully we're gently circling in. We're getting a sense of that circle is becoming smaller and smaller, and eventually our weight is right at the centre of our two feet. And it should feel as though you're not going to be gripping anywhere. Just find a little connection through the arches of the feet. So feeling that the arches of the feet can just gently draw upwards. And there might be more of a sense of pressure across the balls of the feet now, and maybe a little bit into the heel. So an even pressure between those two points as you find that connection through the arches of the foot. Gently not locked into the knees, so there's a sense that you're not locking backwards into the knees, but you've got the legs length. And then we'll bring our awareness into our pelvis. Imagining that the pelvis and the bucket of water filled to the top. We'll tip a little bit of water out of the front of the bucket. And then we'll tip a little bit of water out of the back of the bucket. And then we'll find that place in between those two extremes where our bucket of water is nice and level. We're not tipping out the front or out the back. Now, when we find that place, I want you to just take a moment to really connect into your core muscles. So we're going to think about the pelvic floor muscles. Thinking about those muscles that are right at the base of the pelvis. Let's see if we can draw those muscles up and in and then we'll soften back down. So I want you to keep that going for me as I discuss this a bit further. If we imagine the sits bones on both sides of the pelvis, right at the bottom of the pelvis, the two bony bits that we sit on, Let's imagine we're drawing the muscles from those two points in and upwards. And then we'll release away. Again, we draw them in and up and soften back down. Let's do one more like that. From side to side, and we draw in and up. And then float back down. Now, pubic bone to tailbone, from the front of the pelvis to the back of the pelvis, we draw in and up. Front to back, in and up. Just two more like that. Back to front, drawing up and in. And last one. Now let's see if we can get the whole diamond to connect together. So we're thinking about all four points drawing inwards and upwards. And release. 
you might notice there are some points in that tri in that diamond where you don't get quite as much sense of connection, and that's okay. Hopefully, you can allow those to be more of a focus um, and get more from that as time goes on. So we're really working hard into the pelvic floor. Let's this time draw that into a gentle squeeze. We're going to hold it there. And then we need to make sure we're still breathing. So we'll allow that breath to come wide and full into the rib cage. So nice deep breath. Keep that pelvic floor in a gentle connection and allow the breath to come down nice and gentle. Allow that breath to expand into the front, side, and the back of the rib cage. And then let's take a deep breath, we'll lift the shoulders. And as we are exhale, we'll drop the shoulders down the back. Let's do that a few times and we'll imagine those flat shoulder blades really sliding and gliding down the rib cage with each outward breath. Shoulders ease together and sink down towards the tailbone. And last one, shoulders ease together, sinking down towards the tailbone. Let the shoulders glide down, let the hips float up towards the space above you. So we're taking a nice deep breath there, let's allow the right arm to float forwards and up. Breathing in as the arm floats back down. And then changing over to the other side, arm floats up and floating gently down. Let's allow ourselves this time, as the arm floats down, the other one can start to float upwards. And sinking down, coming up at the same time. Let's feel as though we've got fingertips really reaching for us. So that arm comes quite close to the ear. Now, we're going to change the angle slightly and we'll take the arms off on the diagonal. So as they come in, they almost crisscross one another. So you're making like an X in, in front of yourself. One more on that left side. And then bringing the hands in towards one another, just bring the fingertips together. We'll let the shoulders glide down the back. So taking a deep breath from here, pelvis is going to stay nice and still. We'll just allow the rib cage to gently rotate round to the right side. And we'll breathe in as we return back to the centre. And rotating gently round to the opposite side. Breathing in as we return back to the centre. As you do that, let your thumb stay in line with your breastbone. Allow your nose to stay in line with your fingertips. Finish your arm that second side. And then we'll just take the hands in front of us as if we've got a tray in both hands. Shoulders gliding down the back, nice and strong through the core. We'll let the arms come forwards and to the side. And we'll breathe in as we return back. Arms open out to the side. And drawing the hands back in. Taking two more like that. This time the right arm is going to gently open out around the inner cheek, whatever we've got balanced on our hand, um, balanced as we float above the head, changing to the other side, circling around and circling back. And once again on each side. And last one. And then we'll just press those hands away from us, pushing through the heel of the hand, taking a nice deep breath and circle for three, two, one, circle back the other way, three, two, 
one taking the hands behind you, seeing if you can find the elbows. So we'll allow the hands to find the elbows. If you want to, you can find a little prayer position there. Seeing if it's point up, elbows go wide, shoulders gliding towards one another, head extends up and away. Now as you do that, check you've got that connection through those core muscles so the tailbone's really descending down. Bottom lip will start to pop outwards. And releasing gently there, let the arms release out, give the knees shake out. Take a breath for me, and we're going to take a little side bend. So the right fingertips can glide down the side of the left head, extends out and away. And then we breathe in as we come through the center, up and over to the opposite side. Breath in as we come through the center, up and over to the right side. Okay, so you can add the top arm in. As the top arm reaches, the opposite fingertips are gliding deep down the side of the leg. So you've got a counter pose. You've got one um, hand reaching upwards and one down. Don't let either of them win. I want you to feel that you're equally stretching in both directions. And then as you come back to the centre, let the arm rest down by our sides. Taking a breath, we're going to allow the chin to tuck towards the chest. We're going to allow the head to become heavy and we'll start to gently roll down through the spine. Now, if there's any soreness in the back or the backs of the legs, track the hands down so you won't hurt the thighs. Take a breath at the bottom and then breathe it out as you roll back up through the spine. Head comes on top, lift the shoulders, roll the shoulders back and down, back arms straight towards them. Floating the arms back down, release through the top of the head, rolling down through the spine. As we feel gently engaging, just keep it to keep you nice and secure, and we're rolling up through the spine. Lifting the shoulders, roll the shoulders back and down, let both arms float towards them. Breathing in as the arms float back down. Let's take just two more like that. So we've really got a nice sense of looking to release each and every vertebrae. Imagining that your head were a heavy weight and it's starting to release the vertebrae as you go. Nice deep breath as you stack the vertebrae back on top of one another, coming up from side by piece by piece. Head comes on top, we lift the shoulders, roll the shoulders back and down. Last one here. And as you finish off this roll up, I want you to allow your eyes to open if they haven't already. And as the head comes on top, we'll just take a little bit of a rise. So we'll allow ourselves to focus on a fixed point in front of us. Find that core connection, lifting the heels. So we might lift just an inch, to start off with, and that's fine. Push down into the big toe as you allow the knees to lift and see if that will allow you to keep your ankles in line with your leg. So we don't want the ankles to kind of splay out to the side, we want them coming nice and light. And then looking to see if we can find the control all the way up. Taking two more like that. And then we'll allow that right leg to lift. So we'll allow the foot to come just away from the floor and then floating the foot back down, changing over to the other side. I find it useful to put the hands on my hips because then I know if they're going to wobble. So we've still got our bucket of water in place. We're still going to take, keep the hips nice and stable and still. Good. So the hips stay nice and still. Let's allow that leg to lift and then we're going to push that foot away from us. So flex into the foot and push the leg away and drawing the leg back in. 
change your the other side of the leg a little bit. Float to back down and extend that knee. Lovely. And again, reach. And then pushing the leg out and away. Now I'm wondering whether we can add some arms into this. So let's allow ourselves to come back to our soldier arm. Let's allow the arm to lift on up. And then as we push away, we'll extend the, the torso out with us. Coming back into the center. Oops, just this. And changing over. So as the leg lifts up, the knee lifts. And then we'll extend out through the top hand as we press the leg away. Into the center. Let's do one more on each side. Lift and extend away. And come back into the center, changing over to the other side. Just extending the length in there. And coming back into the center there and releasing. Give it a shake out. Well done. Good. Taking a deep breath, we're going to allow ourselves to roll down through the spine and we'll bring ourselves onto hands and knees. So as we breathe out, we'll release through the top of the head, rolling gently down through the spine. Walk the hands gently forwards and bring the hands underneath the shoulders, knees are underneath the hips. So we'll let the shoulders glide down the back. We're going to just take a moment to switch into those pelvic floor muscles in this position so it might feel quite different. Take a deep breath and as we breathe out, rather than thinking about that full diamond, let's think tailbone to pubic bone like a wave. So we're going to move those muscles like a wave coming forwards to the pubic bone and roll them back. So the tailbone pulls the muscles forwards and up, and then we float back down. Now notice that as you do this, you're not going to change the alignment of your torso at all, your pelvis or your torso. So all the bones stay the same. Let's keep that going and we'll just take a few postural checks here. Making sure we've got the tailbone stretching away from us, making sure we've got the breath coming and going the hands are resting just really gently on the floor and we want to allow ourselves to be nice and soft into the elbows. Shoulder blades glide down the back, we've got lots of length for the neck. So we'll take that to a gentle squeeze, just a gentle wave forwards to the pubic bone. Take a deep breath and allow the right leg to slide away from you. And then we'll breathe in as the leg returns. And allow the opposite leg away and drawing those back in. Now if you are nurturing a lower back issue this might be enough for you to really find that switching in and allow the leg to stretch away. If you've got a prolapse or if there's a pelvic floor issue that you're really looking to address this will be really nice and challenging. If you want more however we can allow the opposite arm to lengthen away at the same time. We're changing sides each time. Just one more on each side. Making sure that the pelvis is staying really stable and the shoulders are staying really stable. We'll finish up there and just allow ourselves to sit back onto our heels. Now if you want to take the knees wider, do. And just enjoy that stretch into the back. Some of us, uh, the head will be resting on the floor, some of us it won't and that's fine. You just allow yourself to release the head towards the floor so you get a nice sense of release into the back. And that gives the wrists a little chance to release. So if you need to give them a little jiggle out, do. Um, we're going to just take one more exercise on hands and knees. 
Um, if hands and knees don't work for you, you can just skip forwards to the next exercises. Um, yeah, this next one, there's not much of an alternative, so you can always um, move to the floor and switch on to the next one. So we'll bring the knees underneath the hips again, bringing the hands underneath the shoulders. We take a nice deep breath. As we breathe out, the right hand lifts and we can feed the hand through the gap between the hands and the knee. Breathing in as we draw the arm back in, changing over to the other side. I mean, if you do find um, this one too much and you want an alternative, you could take those spine twists in a kneeling position. Like I said earlier, when we were standing. So we'll follow the gaze, the hand with our gaze. And we've got that nice sense of connection through the core muscles and then as we work through. And then let's finish up on that left side. And then once again, just sit back onto your heels, lengthen the arms, rest the forehead. Take a nice deep breath and just allow the hands to come gently over to the right side so we get a nice stretch across the left side of the body. And then walking the hands around to the opposite side, reaching the right hand across you, pushing into the right hip, let the head be nice and heavy. And then we'll bring ourselves down onto our fronts and we'll take a nice bit of work for our upper back. Elbows can go wide and we'll allow the nose to hover just an inch away from the floor. Take a moment, we're going to switch the emphasis here onto our deep abdominal muscles. So imagine that there's a precious egg underneath your belly button. You're going to see if you can gently draw the belly button up towards the spine. Tailbone stretches away from you. Now here, you're allowing your nose to hover just an inch away from the floor. Take a nice deep breath for me. If it's enough for you to breathe wide and full into the rib cage and keep that belly button lifting, stay here. Take a deep breath if you want more. Shoulder slides down the back, head extends out and away and get a little lift. The breastbone lifts away from the floor. Breathe in as we float back down. If you're not sure, just take a look at the screen. So often when I'm in class, I'll demonstrate this one before we get moving into it, because I think it's a smaller exercise than it sounds like it's gonna be. We don't press into the floor, but our hands are very delicately touching the floor. So if you want to, you can allow those arms to lift off, let the shoulders glide down the back and squeeze the elbows towards the rib cage and release back down. Shoulders glide down, elbows squeeze in nice and tight. Let's take just one more. And then from there, sit up and allow yourself to come to a seated position to come to see me. So when we get there, we'll take the legs nice and wide. And I know that's not a position that's comfortable for everyone, but we'll just see how long we can stay here and see if we can make it um, a position that's um, going to work for us. So those knobbly bits at the bottom of the pelvis, those two sit bones, we're going to see if we can sit up nice and tall from them. You might even want to take a little tip back or a little tip forwards and find that place. If you find that you are being pulled backwards once you're in this position, grab a cushion and pop it underneath your bottom so you just get a little bit of elevation. And the more elevation, the more you'll be able to find that little tip in the pelvis that I would suggest. So we're seeing if we can lengthen really nice and tall from here. Let's just take a moment to lift the shoulders and roll the shoulders back and down. So I know that for some of us being in this position, we're getting loads of stretch in the inner thigh, and the hips are really talking to us, and that's brilliant. We're just going to stay here and see if we can lift really nice and tall. And we'll let those shoulders glide down the back. Let's stay really well connected through those core muscles. Allow the head to gently tip over to one side. And 
and then another hand to lift up over to the opposite side. And then again, the head gently lifts up over to the right side. And then the other hand to the second side. Okay, bring the head into the centre, maybe bending the knees if you need a little bit of release off of those legs. And then allow the head to just gently roll down the legs, lift around to the right side, come back to the centre. And then I'm rotating around to the opposite side. And once again on each side. And then coming back to the centre. Now if we come from here, in fact, let's let the feet come into the into bed, into the onto the floor, let the knees bend and take the hands behind us. And we'll just take a little tip of the knees over to one side and over to the opposite side. So that should release that out a little bit. If you've got the cushion, you might want to get rid of it for a moment because it's um, you might rock off a bit now. So we're going to tip the knees over to the right side. Doesn't matter if you go the opposite way because we're going to do both. And then we'll allow ourselves to, to sit as square as we can, allowing that, that um, outside or that leg to really drop down and then letting the hip drop away. We've got roughly a 90 degree angle in both knees and we're lengthening really nice and tall. Now we're going to square ourselves off with our pelvis. So our pelvis is pointing in this direction. We're going to allow ourselves to move in gently on both legs. So some options. You can allow that foot to come in a bit closer. That will take the strain away a little bit. Bringing it a bit further forwards will challenge you into that hip that little bit more. If you feel you want to, you can stretch the opposite knee back behind you. If your knee starts to scream at you here, come out the exercise. And we'll change over to the other side. So switching over. Once again, see if we can get that real sense of being level through the pelvis. Hip bones are level with one another. Shoulders gliding down the back. And sometimes it takes a minute or so to just let that release. If you shoot through the roof, don't worry, it happens. So see if we can get that hip to really just release down for you so it's not cramping or anything. And then we'll allow ourselves to ease gently forwards over those legs. Maybe the back leg wants to stretch away. Maybe it does say relief. It's all good. We'll be lifting that nice and tall from here. That's absolutely good as well. And then we're lifting nice and tall. Let's take those legs wide again. Um, some of us will have really wide legs, some not so much, and that's okay. So the shoulders glide down the back. And if you need a slight bend through the knee, it's great. We're going to lengthen the spine really nice and tall. Shoulders glide down and away, and we draw the fingertips in towards one another. Taking a deep breath, strengthen through the core muscles, and then the head rotates around to the right side. Breathing in as we return back to the centre and rotating around to the opposite side. And drawing back to the centre. Keep that going for if you want to take the elbows wide, do. So as you take the elbows wide, make sure your arms are like a frame, a picture frame around you, and you are the picture in the centre. So your the way you look out of your picture doesn't change. You're not suddenly on a side angle. You're looking out of your picture. So it's all about the rib cage rotating around for you there. If you feel you want to, when we get round to the right side this time, we're going to stretch those legs away from us. We're going to allow the left arm to reach out in front of us, and we're going to allow the whole our body to tip forwards. And we'll lift up nice and tall. Find your picture frame, rotate gently around, opposite arm reaches. Again on each side. And last one there, give the legs a big jiggle. So let's allow ourselves to just come onto the side of the mat so that you've got um, the length of the mat behind you. 
and you know you've got space behind you. We're going to take a little bit of work into the spine here. So the feet are just at distance apart and we're lengthening nice and tall through the spine. Let's set those shoulders wide down the back. Scooping in through the tummy, we'll tilt the tailbone under, take a little curve into the lower back. And then we're going to lengthen up nice and tall. Now, if there's any osteoporosis, make this really, really small. Yeah, just allow it to be a pelvic tilt. If you've got any lower back issues, just this is really nice that we're getting flexibility through the spine at the same time as core strength. Just do it at the pace that's right for you and your body. Listen in um, and respond to that. So we're only going as far as we can go with good technique and without any um, discomfort. If you're happy there, the arms are reaching out in front of you. Through the tailbone, curve into the lower back, and then lengthen up nice and tall. And again, we'll tip the tailbone under, curve into the lower back, and lengthen up nice and tall. Maybe we can go a little bit further. Now, I'm thinking I just want you to have a little explore of whether your hip flexors are doing much work for you. So, in this one, I'll bring the feet together, let the knees go wide. Tipping the tailbone under and curving through the lower back. Lower back. And lifting nice and tall. So if you can't go as far, it might tell you that there's quite a bit of hip flexor work going on. And I think it's worth just mixing it up every now and again. So we can do, maybe we'll do one with the knees in parallel. And then let's do one with the feet together and the knees wide. Yeah, feet in parallel. Let's allow ourselves to float all the way down, like 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 a two-hour extent to uh, the point where we're happy. Take a breath for me. Let the right arm float up. Breathe in as you float the arm back down. Change over to the other side. Now you've got the tummy really squeezing in. We're going to be here for a little while, so, so really squeeze through the tummy and check that you're still breathing. Last one, get on side of the shoulder now, come on up. Woo. Let's see if we can take that one all the way to the floor. If you want to hold on to the thighs, do. If you want to um, grab hold of the floor on the way down, do. We're going to come on down and allow ourselves to really release down into the Just surrender to the ground. So when we get a little while, let this will roll from side to side. And then allow the head to come into the centre. Tuck the chin in slightly. Lengthen the arms up towards the sky. Bring them off the floor and then drop them down. So you really feel that the up, the shoulders are really nice and planted into the ground. Bring the arms back by your side, keep the knees just reaching as you're really encouraging those shoulders to glide down the back. And that's rib cage rests down. Now, take a breath. We're going to allow the right foot to come onto the floor. We're going to allow the left foot to come onto the floor. Notice that your back has more potential to move now. So you might find the lower back the way into the floor, you might find you can exaggerate that curve. Let's find a place where hip bone and pubic bone are level with one another. Take a nice deep breath there, scooping in through the tummy, drawing through the pelvic floor. With those connections in place, take a breath, we're going to allow the right hip to slide away, just letting that rib cage sort of sink into the ground. Breath in as the leg returns. Changing over to the opposite side, the leg slides away. Breath in as the leg returns. Now, as the right leg slides away, the left arm is going to lengthen up and overhead. Breathing in as the arm and the leg return. Changing over to the opposite side. And drawing back in. Lovely. Changing sides each time.
So we'll take one more on each side. Stillness. Shoulders gliding down the back, strengthening through the core. Now, hips are going to stay nice and stable with one another. Take a breath, allow the right knee to lift up off above the hip socket. Let that thigh bone be dropping down into the floor, and we're going to just check and circle the right thigh bone. Let's take three in one direction and three in the opposite direction, changing the direction of the circle. Now, the larger you make this circle, the more of a challenge it's going to be for you to keep your hips really nice and stable and still. Hold it for me there. Let the right toe gently dip down and we're testing the temperature of some water. And then allow the right to lift. And again, we dip the toe down. Testing the temperature and then lift one up. Taking two more like that. Floating that foot down, changing over to the other side. The left knee lifts. So we've got that thigh bone hovering above the hip socket. We'll gently circle the left thigh bone, breathing out the top of the circle, breathing into the core of the circle. And then we'll change the direction of that circle. And from there, we'll dip the toe down and allow that leg to lift. And again, dipping the toe down. Just taking two more like that. And then floating that leg down. So we'll have a little look at exploring our two legs hundred position, which is where we push our lower back into the floor. We find an infantry spine as opposed to this neutral spine that we've just been working in. So let's take a deep breath in from there. And as we breathe out, we're going to allow the right knee to lift and hover above the hip socket, bringing the top to that 90 degree angle. We'll press the lower back into the floor. And from there, we can scoop really nicely in through the tummy and allow the second leg to lift. Take a nice deep breath. You've got that back pressing into the floor. From there, we'll allow the right foot to float back down. And then we'll allow the left foot to float back down. Once again, let's do that on the other side. So we're in neutral spine, left knee lifts. Take a breath, press the lower back into the floor and allow that second leg to lift. Take a breath, press the lower back into the floor, press the first leg back down and allow the second leg to float down. So as you work towards finding that hundred, that two legs hundred position, let's do it again on both sides, but I'm going to keep talking to you. As you work towards finding that two legs hundred position, we're going to see if we can get to the point where you can hold it with two legs lifted for five breaths. When you're, when you're happily holding it for five breaths, you know then you can move on from there. Making sure for me, but if you've got two legs lifted, you've got the lower back pressing into the floor and you've got the belly button really scooping down towards the spine. Let's return back to neutral. So we'll take a deep breath there. Let's allow both the arms to lengthen up towards the sky and we'll let the shoulders glide down the back. So the head is nice and heavy, the shoulders are sinking down. We take a breath and we'll just gently circle the arms as if we're circling, as if we're making a little circle on the seat. Breathing out the half a circle, breathing into the foot of the circle. Now as you do that, just take a little check in. How's the pelvic floor behaving? How are the abdominals behaving? Can we get them to scoop into a gentle connection? And then can we still breathe at the same time? Now, if you want to, one leg lifts, we've got that neutral spine position. If you're feeling really confident with the two legs hundred position, press the lower back into the floor and allow both legs to lift. That's marvellous. So we're in this 
We've got these arms circling, we've got the leg lifted. If we're feeling as though our coordination is marvellous today, we're going to open the arms and stretch the leg away. We're going to draw the leg in and keep pulling the hips up. The arms circling. Two more like that for me. And then we'll change over to the other leg. So we'll allow that right leg to float down towards the floor, changing over to the other leg. Now we can stretch the leg away, keep the arms circling. Those shoulder blades really sinking down into the ground. And finishing off there. Bring the knees in towards the chest. Give them both a good hug. And the head rests down onto the floor nice and heavy. Shoulders are sinking down into the ground. We take a deep breath from there and just allow your right foot to rest down onto the floor and slide your right leg away from you. Nice and deep with the breath. And then from there, draw the belly in, draw that right knee in, give it a good hug and we'll slide the left leg away from us. Slide in that leg away. And then bringing that foot back in. Both feet are nicely grounded. We'll come into our shoulder bridge from here. So the arms rest down by our sides. We're going to take a nice deep breath. We're going to breathe out. We're going to press the lower back into the floor. And we'll tip the tailbone up. And then we'll float back down, find our neutral spine position. Let's do that a few times. So we'll start to really identify the vertebrae of the lower back. Pressing the lower back into the floor. Now, as we start to lift the pelvis, we'll start to feel the spine gently away from the ground for a couple of these five deep space breaks. And then floating the vertebrae back down one by one. Pelvis comes down and we return back to neutral. So let's see if we can make that a little bit larger each time, looking to find more articulation through each and every vertebrae. So we'll allow ourselves to find that sense of space in each vertebrae and eventually we'll get to that place where knees, hips and shoulders are in line with one another. Now I want you to get to that place just before you need to squeeze the hips in. So we know where that place is. The rib cage is dropping slightly so it's not expanding up towards the space above you but it's in line. Take a nice deep breath there and then we'll float the vertebrae back down. Down a bit by bit. We allow ourselves to return back to keep from the pubic bone level. Take a nice deep breath there and breathe in out, squeezing in through the tummy. Lower back presses into the floor. We feel the spine away from the ground coming up bit by bit. Knees, hips, and shoulders come into line with one another. Now, if you want to, from here, we can lift the arms so they can go towards the sky, or if you want to, you can take them all the way over the head. Or find somewhere between those two places where you feel as though it's a challenge to keep the vertebrae coming down bit by bit, but not impossible. Let the arms come back by our sides. And again, now adding in, you can add some little leg lifts here, some little foot lifts, if you feel it's right for you. Hips stay nice and still. We can allow one heel to lift back down and then change over to the other side. Now listen into the body. If your hips are starting to wobble here, then keep the feet on the floor and keep the shoulder bridge going through the centre. And the arms. And then floating those arms back down. And returning back to neutral. So if you're feeling as though you can do, when you get to the top of the shoulder bridge this time, we've got knees, hips and shoulders in line with one another. We allow one foot to slip away from the floor. And then we float that foot back down and we change over to the other side. And then bring the arms back over the head, either towards the sky or over the head. If you add them over the head, it will magnify any little sticky parts of the spine and make it more challenging for you. So finding that place where it works well for you. 
and letting the arms come back by our sides. Just one more there. Adding that leg lift if you want to, the leg can extend towards the sky, bringing it to that sort of level. Listening to your body, if your hamstrings start to scream at you, then stop doing the leg lifts. And we'll need to do a little bit more work on getting some more strength into the glutes first of all, into the bottom. And then drawing those arms back by our side. From there, bring that right knee and give it a little hug. And we're going to allow ourselves to stretch the right leg up towards the sky. Now, some people find that when they're trying to grab hold of their foot, their leg, um, they kind of their head has to lift away from the floor because their their leg's quite far away from them, so their arms aren't long enough. Um, if you find that, um, see if you can get a belt or a dressing a dressing gown belt or a scarf or even just a long towel wrap it around your foot and then you can hold on to the ends and that will allow you to do that without putting any strain in the upper body gently just take that leg across the midline of the body so we stretch through the outside of that hip and then we'll allow that right foot to come across the left knee let the right knee fall open to the side. Now we can either press that right knee away from us or we can weave the hands around the left side and ease the left knee closer to the side. Nice deep breath change over to the other side. So we'll find that hamstring lengthening first of all, stretching the left leg up towards the sky, holding on around the back of the thigh. Shoulders melt down into the ground and the head rests down. So chin wants to be um, tucked in if we can, so we've got a sense of being nice and long through the back of the neck all the way down the back of the torso. You can hold on around the, the calf, to go around the thigh, try to avoid the knee, just so we're not yanking on the joint. And then that leg can come a little way away, a little way across the midline of the body. So just notice that. I noticed then that my chin was starting to jump forwards where I'm pushing myself into the stretch. And then just to release out of it, shoulders soften down and, and this whole part of the body feels a lot happier in that stretch. This part still doesn't, but um, this bit does, so at least we're not putting extra strain on ourselves. So we'll take that foot across the right knee, let the knee fall open to the side, so we make a kind of triangular shape with the leg. We'll weave the hands around the right thigh ease the leg in towards us. If you can't reach the leg, um, you can again you can wrap the band around this um, right leg and ease the, ease the leg in place that way or you can allow the foot to stay on the floor and we'll stretch the knee away from us. And really simple in there. So we're going to allow ourselves to come up to sitting. We'll bring the knees in towards the chest and give them a little hug. If you can, just peel the head up and take a little rock forwards and backwards. If that doesn't feel very nice on your back, um, then come onto one side and push down on your hands and bring yourself up to a seated position to face the rock again. Otherwise, keep the chin tucked in. We'll rock forwards and backwards and we'll build a little bit of momentum to see if we can pin ourselves up to sitting. And then from there, we'll bring ourselves around and we'll find a nice crouch position. So before we bring ourselves up to standing, I want to take a little stretch for the hip flexor. So we're on a kneeling position, 
take the right leg forwards, the big step forwards. I'll show you what that looks like on the side. So we're in a nice kneeling position here. Then we tip forwards, hip back, and that might feel might feel that stretch into the hip there. As we do this, we're still going to think about how we look. So we're here, we're still going to give it a little engagement. And then we'll just allow that hook to come a little bit further forwards. And then we'll ease forwards into that stretch. So the knee comes towards the um, big toe, the knee starts to come over the ankle. If you find that this is too much, pull back again and keep the hip tip going. And then tip the leg back and then change over to the other side. If you can do it with no hand, it's a marvellous thing. If you want to put the hand down to change over legs, that's marvellous also. The foot's underneath the knee. Oh, see, it's a bit of a challenge to balance. We squeeze in, we tip under and release. And it, I think it's quite surprising how challenging it is in hip that you can actually move your pelvis. Um, so it depends on the range of movement we've got in our hip and what movement we've got in our lower back. Some people I find um, when I ask them to do this, the hip just won't move. So they're moving forwards and backwards in the torso. Instead, just see if you can really get that pelvic tilt like we did in the warm up when we were playing around with that bucket of water image. And then we'll allow that foot to come a little bit further forwards. And then we tip the pelvis, uh, tip the hip forwards. So this time we are hinging forwards through the pelvis. And if you want to put the hand on the floor to stabilize yourself and to give it a little bit more stretch, you can do. Nice deep breath and bringing ourselves back. Find in a crouch position from here and we will tuck the toes under and we'll bring ourselves up to standing. So just as we were at the beginning, so we've got the feet just hip distance. Apart. I'm going to bring myself up to standing by rolling up through the spine, but if you know a better way, by all means do that instead. When we get there, the feet are just at distance apart. Put that tailbone descending down, gentle drawing in through the pelvic floor. As we lift the shoulders, roll the shoulders back and down. Take a nice deep breath in, reaching those toes. Breathe it out, and we'll let it all go. <sighs> Give it a shake out. Gives us a round of applause. Well done.